Hello and welcome to this dev vlog about my AI powered Unreal Engine game. I'm going to explain some of the thought processes behind it, some of the technical stuff, and then at the end I'll show the gameplay. With that out of the way, let's begin. Fungi distribute nutrients in forests, connecting trees in a vast underground network. In my game, I use luminescent cables to denote these fungal connections. I also wanted to show the destructive role of technology within ecosystems. To make technology, we need resources. To transport these resources, we need roads, and roads destroy habitats. In my game, the transportation of resources is represented by questions rolling down a hill. Here, a tree is blocking transportation. The tree must be cut to allow the resources to flow past. To make artificial intelligence, the resources that need to be transported are rare earth minerals. These minerals are used in data centers. Australia produces these minerals, so is where I set my game. In the mining process, the transportation of minerals, equipment and personnel results in animals being killed by vehicles. Predators will feed on roadkill, putting them at risk of meeting the same fate. This transferal of nutrients from roadkill to predator mirrors how dying trees will transfer their nutrients to neighbouring trees via fungal connections. This information informed my next puzzle. Nutrients from a dying kangaroo must be transferred to a hungry dingo, allowing the minerals to flow past, but turning the kangaroo into roadkill. While vehicles create roadkill, technology can also be used to protect wildlife. Waste minerals from mining are disposed of in structures called tailing dams. Some tailing dams use fungi to filter out pollution in a process called micro-remediation. Here, seepage from a tailing dam is poisoning aquatic animals. By asking the micro-remediation how it filters pollutants, it produces a long enough word to block the wildlife from becoming infected. I wanted to explore the narrative of pollution and habitat destruction further by creating a series of events to teach the player about mining and its environmental impact. The mine level teaches the player about the machinery used in excavating materials. The largest machine used in mining is a dragline. Draglines consist of the main body, called a house, and the boom which extends off it. In my level, I added three AI, the house, the boom, and the mining pit. The dust created from mining can be polluting, and on a wider scale, climate change is causing high levels of UV radiation and extreme wind and rain in Australia. I wanted to show the effect of each of these conditions on my AI characters. In the house, dust and wind can cause erosion, and prompting the AI will reveal this information. Drag ropes are frequently damaged by dust, leading to fraying and potential breakage. UV from welding can be harmful to workers. UV radiation emitted during welding requires UV resistant materials and PPE for worker safety. Drag lines can also attract lightning. The idea was that the player would prompt back and forth to reveal all the information. I ensure mining machinery safety during rainstorms, preventing electrical issues and lightning strikes like the one in a Queensland mine in 2017. So they might become curious and ask to learn about a specific story. In 2017, lightning struck a drag line in Queensland during a storm while contractors took shelter beneath it. On the boom, dust and UV can affect vision. The glasses I'm wearing are protective eyewear. Wind can produce flying debris. Secure tools and equipment before the wind picks up. Rain can cause slips. Slip, trips and falls can lead to accidents and injuries if I'm not operated and maintained appropriately. On the pit, dust can be toxic. Respiratory protective equipment can help filter out harmful particles. UV can be a carcinogen. UV radiation is a known health hazard. Dust contains the rare earth minerals, so high winds disperse this dust, resulting in a loss in revenue. Reducing wind speed minimizes dust emissions, saving revenue. Finally, rain can accumulate in the pit basin. I'm a flooded mine, accumulating water faster than it's removed. Each character profile contained carefully researched information, which I laid out on a Miro board that you can read if you'd like a better understanding. For the dragline model, I contacted a nickel mine in Australia and was sent an STL file which I cleaned up in Blender. To switch between character profiles, I used real-world weather information. I got the mine's coordinates and then used an API to get the weather forecast. I used this to set my in-game weather. It's dusty and windy at the moment. As this dies down, the precipitation picks up and it starts to rain. 
Then nearing the middle of the day, there's a spike in UV. By getting this information in my AI blueprint, I could switch between character profiles when the player entered the collision box. So in dusty conditions, approaching the AI will display the dust character profile. I thought that as well as learning information, the player should be able to experience non-human perspectives. I was inspired by nature in VR. You started as a mosquito, you get eaten by a dragonfly, and you become a dragonfly. And then you get eaten by a frog. While this narrative follows the food chain, I thought that my transitions could follow an unnatural chain of events where technology is interfering with nature. In the mine level, the player starts by being presented with the weather forecast, date and time. As they enter the house, they are a human. On dragline booms, workers can get swooped by territorial magpies. So approaching this AI, while no weather condition is spiking, turns the player into a magpie. The same is true of the pit, which turns them into a kangaroo. They can then transfer their nutrients to the dingo to allow the goods to flow past. I made a second level for the tailing dam. I split these character profiles into micro-remediation, tailings, and flora and fauna. For the micro-remediation, dust pollution can be prevented. Placing clean soil over tailings prevents erosion, dust, and supports plant growth. UV radiation inactivates spore dispersal. UV radiation can pose a significant threat to fungi, as it can inactivate fungal spores. Wind currents help distribute the fungal spores. I am a fungus dispersing spores and rain can cause the mushrooms to fruit. I am a fungi flowering from rainfall. Tailings can turn into dust. When these tailings are not properly managed and covered, they can easily be picked up by the wind and spread as dust particles. UV can dry the tailings, exacerbating pollution. Solar radiation increases the surface temperature of the water, leading to evaporation. Rain can corrode the dam structure. Water from heavy rainfall can seep into the concrete of tailings dam. This AI can turn the player into pollution as they float down to the flora and fauna. For the flora and fauna, dust can settle on plant leaves. Dust settling on leaves can reduce their ability to photosynthesize. UV light causes some Australian animals to glow. Platypuses have been found to glow under ultraviolet light. High wind can uproot trees. Trees can be severely damaged by high winds. Floods can degrade farmland and kill livestock. Devastating floods in Western Queensland in 2025. This AI can turn the player into a bellfrog. They then must hop around, transferring nutrients to the micro-remediation. The nutrients increases the AI's word count. However, nutrients from polluted animals decreases the word count. Once the sentence is long enough to block the pollution, the player gets their final task. They transfer the nutrients from a poisoned bellfrog to a water snake, killing the snake and ending the game. The game itself damages the environment. Each time you interact with the AI, 500 milliliters of water is needed to cool the ChatGPT server plants. I kept track of this, reminding the player of their usage at the end. You used six liters of water. In, in each level, there are three interactive AI that change depending on the weather. While no conditions are spiking, approaching the AI will transform the player into an animal. Interacting with these AI uses water. Each level also has rolling minerals, text-based AI, and nutrient rocks. Transferring nutrients to the remediation blocks the minerals, while transferring nutrients away from the kangaroo allows the minerals to pass. Each playthrough is unique, dependent on the weather and AI responses. The intended playtime is an hour, allowing you to speak with each character while you wait to be transformed. In the following playthrough, I had no time to wait for the weather or speak with every character. Think of it not as the accumulation of my project, but as one possibility in an ambitious and unique learning experience. The end. Goodbye. You are a human. I am a forest. In front of you, you'll find the weather forecast. The weather can affect me in many different ways. Once you have an understanding of the forecast, press E to start. This is the mine. This is where minerals are harvested from. Approach the machinery to find out more. Up the stairs, you'll find some colorful confetti. Approach it to ask a question, but use this sparingly as questions consume water. Dust. Cooling plant, cooling plant. 
Dragline chains are crucial components of a dragline system, transferring power from the motor to the bucket and providing stability during operation. They are prone to wear and tear from dust. Good job. Next up, you'll need to climb to the top of the machinery. UV. Cooling plant, cooling plant. UV radiation causing retinal burns in miners, combined with dust reducing visibility, poses safety risks for workers and drivers in and around mining areas, increasing the likelihood of accidents. Cooling plant, cooling plant. Wearing protective eyewear, using proper ventilation to control dust, and following safety protocols can help reduce the risk of eye damage and accidents in mining operations. Congratulations, you've been swooped by a magpie. Magpies swoop at humans as a defensive behavior against threats. Press the space bar to flap your wings, then fly down to the next piece of confetti. Dust. Cooling plant, cooling plant. I am a dust mask. I protect against harmful dust particles produced from digging, mining and quarrying activities that can damage lungs and create safety hazards. Congratulations, you found a kangaroo. Roadside vegetation attracts kangaroos, meaning they account for 50% of roadkill in Australia. Hold W to continue. This kangaroo is blocking mineral transportation. You'll need to transfer its nutrients to allow the minerals to pass. Click on the blue nutrient rock beside the kangaroo and feed it to the dingo. Good job. The minerals can now flow down the road. Follow them to the next level. This is the tailing dam where waste is stored. In this level, the minerals are infecting wildlife. Luckily, microremediation consumes these minerals, protecting ecosystems. Transfer nutrients to the microremediation and help it stop pollution. Nutrients from infected animals won't help, but you can always reset this by approaching the animal. Precipitation. Cooling plant, cooling plant. I am a fungus flowering from rainfall. Mycelium spreads underground and mushrooms pop up after significant rain. Working with specific substrates, I help rejuvenate soil through decomposition and collaboration with microbes. Nice. You've got the hang of it. Before we continue, visit the tailings to find out more. Wind. Cooling plant, cooling plant. I am pollution from a tailing dam. Without proper maintenance, I become dust carried by the wind, posing health risks to nearby communities. Congratulations, you are a mineral. Hold W to float downstream to the flora and fauna. Congratulations, you are a bell frog. Minerals can be toxic to amphibians like the bell frog. Finish transferring the nutrients to prevent further contamination. causing devastating floods in western Queensland. Over 140,000 cattle and sheep are missing or dead. Unprotected soil from mining worsens erosion, harming wildlife and marine ecosystems. Good job, you block the minerals. 
Your next task is to feed the water snake. Transfer the nutrients from the bell frog to the water snake. Oh no, it looks like the bell frog was polluted. That's game over, I'm afraid. Congratulations, you used 3.5 litres of water in your playthrough. That's more water than a sapling tree needs per day. The cube in front of you estimates this volume of water. You were a human, I was a forest. Would you like to play again? Hello, it's my real voice again. This video is almost over, but if you'd like to learn more about how I made this game, then you can check out my channel where I have these quick tip videos about the process. The game you've just seen was actually just the prototype for the finished game, which I'm going to be releasing a video about very soon. Check out my channel to watch that, and thank you for watching this. Bye.